think it's time we blow this scene. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, it's jam. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of AGR's Pop Culture Reviews. And yes, I'm going back into my personal treasure chest and pulling out some sweet pieces I just had lying there waiting to be reviewed. Now, in 2019, I had the pleasure of being asked to cover the AlterCon of South Florida. Had some really good interviews, met some really great people, and most importantly, walked away with some pretty sweet swag. Goodness gracious, <laughs> what can I say about One Piece? It certainly has one of the most devoted fan bases, and you kind of have to be. At over a thousand chapters, I mean, if you thought Inuyasha was long, One Piece dwarfs it by a long shot. This series is zany and whimsical and comes with a cacophony of wonderful and unforgettable characters. And for an anime whose main protagonist is made out of rubber, it's surprisingly deep. Now she's easily one of the most important members of the crew, and although she has several abilities, the most important are drawing maps and navigating the straw hats through troubled waters. So today we're going to be reviewing Ban Presto's version of Nami, the Code B Diamond Flagship statue. Let's take a closer look. Nami certainly has a tragic story, and I'm not going to spoil it. You should really watch the anime, but the representation here is absolutely fantastic. I love the head sculpt here, and this does look very Kotobukiya-esque. The eyes are fantastic. I absolutely love the hair sculpt, especially the color. They got it just perfect. As you know, she meets Luffy for the first time in Orange Town, and you know what? Her hair color reminds me of that whole episode. It was really funny. Overall, I absolutely love the head sculpt here. Looks amazing, guys. The midsection and upper torso of this piece are simply outstanding. Just look at that sculpt, guys. Now, I love the costume too, and there are several variations of this character. Now, it reminds me of a schoolgirl meets dominatrix leather fandom type of thing. The skin tone here is done very well. I love the sculpt and the belly button. It's very sexy, also very thin waist. The color palette is also done very well. I love the black offset against the blue, and it contrasts very well with her belt. Overall, this is a really well done job, guys. I have to admit, pretty spectacular. Now, the lower section of this piece, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. It just is not as remarkable as the top section of this piece. Now, it just might be juxtaposition, but it just looks really weird. Also, her stance looks a little bit off. Now, the sculpt in the boots is done pretty well. I love the color palette, and it is in line with what we see in the anime in terms of the way this piece is drawn. But again, something is just a little bit off with the lower section. Again, it doesn't look horrible, but it just doesn't necessarily go with the piece. Now, Nami has some very interesting abilities in the show. But here, she's rocking a weapon. Now, I'm not sure exactly what this is. It looks like a katana and a baton, an extendable one, but it is pretty interesting. Now, I do love the little kind of ribbon that's at the end of the baton, which looks pretty cool. The handle is actually textured, but the rest of it is pretty black. Not too much detail, but it is cool that it's almost the full length of the statue if you stand it up. Now, you definitely want to mirror this piece because there's so much detail on the reverse side, particularly in the hair sculpt and how intricate it is. The color palette is fantastic, but what I really like is how the baton actually goes through the two little ponytails and just take a look at how intricately they're sculpted. It gives it a nice sense of three dimension that the baton goes right through it. She is rocking a little fan service there and you get a greater appreciation of her pistol and pouches, which look really awesome, guys, and a greater appreciation of how she attaches to the base. Overall, definitely mirror this one. And speaking of the bases, Band Presto does some pretty interesting things, but they sometimes mess it up a little bit. And what I mean is, that the bases are very minute. I mean, absolutely zero profile when you think about it. Now, it does look like she's stepping into a stone, and this is very typical. The only issue I have with these bases is that they're not as sturdy, or they don't lay as flush as you want them to be, so these pieces have a tendency of spontaneously falling over. So just keep that in mind. Well, these pieces are readily available, and they're pretty cheap, so they don't necessarily get my holy grail seal of approval, but they do get my second rating, which is a must add to your collection because they are pretty cool, especially if you're a One Piece fan and they come in multiple variations and multiple colors. Now, before I go, I just really have to thank the organizers of the UltraCon of South Florida for allowing me and really inviting me over to come and pick this piece up. All right, everybody. So that's my official review on Ban Presto's version of Nami, the Code B Diamond Flagship statue. As always, I thank you for tuning in and I'll see you on the next AGR's Pop Culture Review.